It ain't luck. It's destiny. Hi everyone, welcome to a, a new video. It's been a while, um, I think three months, something like that. Um, a lot of things have happened, but I'm not really gonna cover that in this video. I think the more important thing is that I'm here now making a video for you guys about Twisted Fate. Um, so hope you will enjoy, hope you will learn something. And uh, if, like always, if you have any thoughts or questions, Feel free to leave them down in the comments and I will try to answer them for you. A um, topic I wanted to cover today is uh, whether Twisted Fate is returning. Um, I think most people know that he has been underperforming for a while now. Um, if you didn't know or if you don't know, basically after the, the nerfs um, he kind of dropped in win rate. Um, he rose up again slowly. Uh, and that made me think that he was gonna recover, but then they um, nerfed a few other things, uh, like side nerfs, basically not nerfing the champion itself, but um, other champions becoming meta, the meta shifting, his runes getting touched, uh, Everfrost getting nerfed, uh, and that in itself made him drop again to like 45% win rate, um, which is uh, really low. <laughs> Let's just say that. I think Rice has been the champion in the mid lane with the lowest win rate uh, for the past few months, but Twisted Fate was actually joining him, which I uh, have to say I also kind of predicted and covered in uh, one of my videos previously where I talked about how Riot is going about balancing Twisted Fate and that if they wanna, like, it's that it's really hard to balance him for both solo queue and pro play. And that he's probably gonna join the ranks of Rice, where if they give him any buffs, he's gonna be pick or, ba pick or ban in pro play. And if they nerf him, he's just gonna be unplayable in solo queue, which is basically the problem with Rice at the moment. Um, but Riot did buff him again, so I'm hoping that um, they leave him untouched for now. And hopefully, uh, yeah, he'll stay like uh, at a decent win rate, or at least he'll be playable. Um, but yeah, that's for the intro. I want to do a small short recap on what exactly happened over the patches because a lot of stuff happened. Like I said, I haven't really uploaded in three months, so that's like a decent amount of patches that uh, went by. Um, this is the initial uh, nerf that happened to Twisted Fate. Like I said, when the nerf hit, I was initially like quite positive. I was like, you know, He's probably gonna recover from this. It's gonna hurt him definitely, but I was very like positive since before this nerf he was quite I mean maybe not overpowered, but he had very high win rate in solo queue and he was picker picker ban and pro play, so I was like the nerfs made sense, let's just say that. Um so yeah, these are the nerfs. I'm not gonna go over all the exact numbers. Uh, if you wanna read them, feel free to pause the video. Um then uh, patch 12.11 came around. This was when Twisted Fate was kind of starting to recover in terms of win rate and how good the champion fit was fitting in the meta. But then Riot decided to nerf Everfrost, which was quite a big nerf, I would say, for Twisted Fate, because he's, at, at least if you play him AP, right? This was the go-to item back then. Um, and I can't really say that there are a lot of other champions that are that dependent on Everfrost as Twisted Fate is. Um, so this was a very big hit specifically for Twisted Fate. So they reduced like the root duration from 1.5 to 1 second. Which initially I was like alright they're not touching the damage so it's gonna be fine. But then his win rate just dropped insanely hard from like 49, 48 to 46, 45 percent, so that was pretty bad. But in the same patch they also buffed Night, Night Harvester and this, when they nerfed Everfrost, I immediately already started thinking, you know, maybe Night Harvester might be actually a good item on TF, right? 
why not try it out? But then the problem with this item is that it doesn't give any um, any mana. Actually, let me pull up. Yeah, sorry about that. I just pulled up uh, the item web page on the internet to kind of show you guys why this item back then was not really ideal. Um, the reason for it is that this item doesn't give any mana and back then TF did have... People saying that TF doesn't have mana issues because he has blue card is just completely stupid. Like whenever I tried this item, at least in my MMR, I just I always had mana issues. Like um, this was a decent problem back then unless you were going maybe mana flow and tier uh, like trying to compensate but that's not really ideal I would say if you have to, to spend 400 gold extra every single game just to get enough mana to do your spell rotations it's definitely not ideal um, so yeah I've, everyone just kept buying Everfrost uh, some people went towards crown I also tried out crown a bit more often um, but this item in my opinion especially has been losing um, a little bit of its power because a lot of people have figured out how to basically play around the item um, they now know like that they can proc the shield basically and that before they do have to, before they do an all-in they have to make sure that the, the item is proc whereas before when the item initially was released everyone was like who this is op why is this item in the game but no one really knew how to play around it but now i would say people do so i think this item also lost a bit of a uh, bit of its strength but uh yeah so that's those were my thoughts back then um but i still kept buying everfrost and crown uh those are like the main mythic items i was running um, but those Night Harvester buffs were good, I would say. They were definitely nice. Um, then they also changed the build pod, uh of Night Harvester. So they went from like Blasting Wand to Fiendish Codex. I, they did this with a few other items um, as well. I think Lichbane as well, if I'm not mistaken. They also did this to Lichbane where they removed the Blasting Wand and they added Fiendish Codex because the item then gave ability haste so they could add this to the build pod which is also quite nice i think this build pod is a lot nicer than than this one um then patch 12.14 they nerfed time warp tonic again they already nerfed this before uh they nerfed uh, the movement speed that you got when you were using this rune from 5 to 4 percent and then in this patch they nerfed it even more from 4 to 2 percent which made me consider other runes i would say because i think the only reason you really use time warp tonic especially on tf is because of the movement speed it gives um, obviously the instant health you get back is nice and uh, corrupting potion was back then i would say a very nice item but I think especially for pro play and uh, like certain champions they would just buy this item every game and they basically relied on this item to exist which is I think not that healthy um, so yeah they nerfed this and then I was like you know 2% movement speed is like from 5% to 2% is a big nerf so I think this rune has to be replaced on Twisted Fate uh, I don't think there's any reason to use this anymore. Um, so we'll get to that later um, with the, the new setup I'm using. Uh, then they also buffed Scorch. Uh, and I think that's really it for Twisted Fate in terms of the runes he really uses. Um, yeah, Scorch, you don't run Scorch on TF, but I'm running Scorch right now. I'll say that uh, already. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that later. And then patch 12.17 came around where they buffed uh, TF. Um, they buffed the AP ratio on his Q from 70 to 80%, which is decent, I would say. It's a decent amount. I think what they're trying to achieve with this buff is they want to shift TF from building rapid fire cannon to building AP items. 
again without removing the interaction. I think, I don't know why Riot is so scared of removing the, the rapid fire cannon interaction. Um, but what this indicates to me is that, you know, they don't want you to have an insane amount of wave clear building basically utility items only. They want you to build AP items and then you'll have the wave clear, which in my opinion makes a decent amount of sense. Um, it's also the way I prefer playing TF, like I like to just build raw AP. Um, I think rapid fire cannon still fits in his build, but it's not a necessary item. Like you don't need that item every single game. Um, at least in solo queue. I think in pro play it's kind of a must and I would say the only reason why TF is so oppressive in pro play is because of rapid fire cannon. Um, but if you're just stomping solo queue and you're not playing in like Grandmaster Challenger, I would say you don't really need rapid fire every game. Um, I think just going raw damage is often probably better. And then they also um, they buffed the mana cost, uh, or they basically lowered the mana cost you need to use your W, which was, I would say, kind of an underlooked, bu underlooked buff. I think a lot of people were like, alright, this is nice, but this doesn't really do anything, because TF doesn't have mana issues. Yes, he doesn't have mana issues if you build mana items, uh, mana mythics, I mean, or item, uh, mythics or items, but uh, if you build a mana mythic, Yes, you don't have mana issues, but this also got me thinking in that Twisted Fate is locked into building mana mythics. Like, if you don't build mana mythics on Twisted Fate, you are basically... You're gonna run into mana issues, it's that simple. Um, but with this buffs, buff, I would say things definitely changed. Especially because you max W after Q, if you're going APTF, right? So you're getting to this, like, 60... Uh, 70 mana needed very fast and like 100 to 70 is that's a decent amount uh, that's a decent amount so yeah this is the current patch this is like this they did this in patch 12.17 which is the patch that's currently live on the on the servers uh, and twisted fate definitely arose in win rate after that uh, I can show you guys here so like this is his lowest point here i hope you can see this says like 45 so this is like 45 percent win rate which is like i said the same as rise um really low like i would say if you're picking if you were picking tf right here you were literally like just handicapping yourself um which is also one of the main reasons why I didn't really upload or stream or play League. I didn't even play League, to be honest. I just stopped playing. I did a lot of other stuff. Um, but yeah, he rose up slowly. So 45, 46, and then he went up slowly. And now the patch hit, and now he's sitting at 48. He's dropping a bit, but I think this is more so because of people just picking the champion up again and then it's been a while since he's been meta so I think people don't really know maybe don't really know how to play him anymore I'm not sure what's causing this this is also like three days so it's not really a good sample size I would say but he went up in win rate let's just say that the pick rate also went up uh, game count went up obviously so immediately when the, the buffs hit the live servers, I started thinking about potential builds, potential rune choices that I might want to change because of like the reasons I just, uh, or the patches I just showed, like, right? A lot of runes changed, um, a lot of items got nerfed and I started thinking like, are there other runes or other items that you can maybe replace? Maybe there's an other way to play Twisted Fate now. Um, and that brought me to Lolalytics, um, which is, I would say, a nice website to look at now and then, um, just to check out win rates. Now, you need to be very careful with looking at these win rates. You always want to look at the sample size, so always look at the amount of games that are played with a certain item, because an item can have like an 80% win rate, but maybe there's only like... Like, look, for example, Imperial Mandate has like a 55% win rate if you build this on Twisted Fate, but there's only 9 games, so that's like, the sample size is insanely low, so 
always be careful with things like this but in general if you know how to look at numbers this is a pretty nice website to look at and get a, a general idea of what like good runes or good items are to buy on certain champions so this is uh, a page specifically about like twisted fate about his abilities is uh, the summoner spells that have the highest win rate starting items runes everything right um, so I ended up on here and I don't know exactly what the numbers were back then but I immediately noticed that uh, there were other mythics that had higher win rates uh, and then my I immediately fell onto Night Harvester which like I already covered in the patches I was already quite interested in this item especially because of the amount of ability haste you get and the passive is also a decent passive I would say for Twisted Fate they changed the build part which is nice the only downside um, with this item is that it doesn't give any mana but with the buffs Twisted Fate just got where you don't really uh, you don't need as much mana as you did before on W. Um, I think this item might be a good choice on TF right now. Um, Everfrost has a 49% win rate, which is not bad, but I mean, compare this to 55 of Night Harvester, obviously, is a lot higher. You could debate that you know the sample size is a bit lower, but these are this is like 1k games, I would say it's a decent amount. Um, so yeah, this is currently my go-to mythic on TF, but like I said, this gives no mana, so you need to compensate a bit. Um, I think if you run the same runes like you used to, and you go Night Harvester, maybe you'll be able to make it work, but, um, I would go mana flow band in my runes, just to be safe. Um, but maybe this will change in the future, I don't know. At the end of the day, the patch is only out for two weeks now. I only really played a total of maybe 14 games or something, so um, there's still a lot of testing to be done, right? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of other things on here as well, like starting items, as you can see. Dark Seal plus Refillable has a very high win rate. Why is this? Mm. It's hard to say, because I don't really think Dark Seal is that good of a starting item. I think you can you can go it, like you, you can use this as a starting item, it's fine. Um, it's just, I think it's only really good if you're playing in a lane that's like, where you're really unpunished. Let's say it's like a, a, an insanely easy matchup. It would be the same as like if you build like Kull on an ADC because of the matchup because you know that you're not gonna trade in lane you're just gonna be farming I think then like dark seal starting item is fine but if you're gonna be trading I think uh, Doran's ring is probably still the best uh, or is the best at the moment um, ba -ba -ba. so yeah there, these are like all combinations of build pods with win rate and stuff um, Let's go to the runes, right? Um, yeah, here. So Electrocute, 49% win rate, which isn't bad. This tree got a lot of nerfs over the years. Uh, they nerfed the Taste of Blood healing. Um, they uh, removed Ravenous Hunter, so the rune that uh, gave you uh, like spell vamp uh, slash lifesteal, I think. Um, this was like the go-to setup, also dope I used the setup back in the day. You would just have, to have a lot of lane sustain with the setup, because you had the uh, healing from Ravenous Hunter, and then also Taste of Blood. Uh, but then they removed Ravenous Hunter, they added Treasure Hunter, which is not necessarily a bad rune on TF, but I don't, in my opinion, TF is not real, really that reliant on getting like to certain item amounts to get his first item or stuff like that. Uh, you already have your passive with like extra gold. Um, I'm yet to be convinced by this rune. I don't think it's bad, but um, yeah. Honestly, I'm not really sure what option to go here right now anyway. I think these, these options are all fine. They're all fine, but that's it really. Um, but like I said, this tree got a lot of nerfs slash changes over the years. So I think maybe now it's time to shift again. Um, 
and yeah i think comet right now is probably not bad it's a good option um as you can see the win rate is also a bit higher um not like this is really low win rate like 49 14 like kind of 49 you know this is not low but this is definitely higher um sample size is decent as well again um so yeah that got me thinking so over to um my setup the current setup that i am using um this is like a, a, a random alt account that i use to just test out the dk to platinum one but i'm basically playing in like diamond 3 diamond 2 diamond 1 games kind of depends um i've been winning a decent amount of of my twisted fate games as you can see so uh and i'm running the same setup basically every game in the beginning it was kind of fluctuating i i tried uh sorks in the beginning as well um but most of the time i'm just buying ionians plus uh night harvester that's my go to setup um in terms of items but we'll get to that uh soon we'll get to the runes first actually so uh, this is a standard page i'm using right now um i would say this is the replacement for the electrocute page um this is a page you want to run into melee matchups so if you're playing against a melee character similar to when you would run electrocute right um, if it's a lane that's uh, playable for twisted fate let's just say that this is a setup you don't want to run into a matchup that's insanely hard where you're gonna have to base early um, then you still want to go spellbook but in a standard lane this is probably what i would say the best setup on tf at the moment so why these runes um, first of all i would ignore the comet arcane comet because a lot of people are going to be like yeah but arcane comet doesn't give as much damage as electrocute how are you gonna proc it because you might accidentally proc it on your q um you know electrocute is overall a better da damage rune yes this is all true but the main reason why i'm running this rune setup is because of the mana flow band and uh, absolute focus plus scorch uh, Scorch got buffed as well, or buffed, it got changed, but I would say it's definitely stronger than it was before. Um, absolute focus because of the one shot potential you're gonna have on the wave. So, when they nerfed Twisted Fate, the AP ratio on his Q was kind of fucked, where you couldn't one shot backline anymore. So, at level 9, to give you guys a, like a TLDR. At level 9, Twisted Fate has all his points in his Q, and before before all the nerfs happened, you would be able to one-shot the uh, last three, like the, the backline minions, the three caster minions, with one Q, which is really nice on a champion like Twisted Fate, because you tend to roam and move a lot on the map. You don't want to be stuck in lane, like hi hitting your minions, um, which is why it's really important to be able to clear your wave as soon as possible, right? Um, that wasn't possible anymore after the nerfs, but now with the buffs, so they upped his AP ratio, now it's possible again, but there's a catch, I'm pretty sure. You need to... Uh, I th I'm pretty sure, I'm not, like, I'm not certain on this, don't shoot me <laughs> if, if this is not correct, but I'm pretty sure you need to go AP item second after your mythic if you want to be able to do it. So you can't like go Everfrost into Rapid Fire Cannon and um, go Electrocute page. I'm pretty sure then it's not possible to one shot backline. Don't quote me on this. Uh, I haven't tested it myself. Like I said, I only played 14 games and that's only with this setup. So, um, but yeah, this is like the reason why you also want to go absolute focus gonna, because it's going to give you more uh, ability power. Also, I would say if you play Twisted Fate, at least the way I play him, I'm above 70% health most of the time, which is when this rune is uh, is active, right? Um, 
I tend to play a bit more back, a bit more calculated. I'll go in for crazy plays when I know that's gonna net me a win, but I'm not gonna uh, like f flip every team fight and go in and run around at like 40-30% health. I'll, I'll try to be as healthy as possible, uh, as much as possible. Let's just say it that way. So those are the reasons why um, I'm running this. Um, most important thing is the mana flow band, because like I said, if you're running ho Night Harvester, you don't have any mana in that item. But with mana flow, you're getting 250 bonus mana, which is a decent amount to get out of a rune. Like 250 mana is... That's half of... Uh, of Everfrost basically, right? Everfrost gives 600 mana. If you run mana flow, if you stack it up, you're, you'll get 250. That's a decent amount. And I have not had any mana issues whatsoever running uh, the setup I'm currently running. So, yeah. Um, then over to the inspiration tree. I think some of you maybe already noticed is that I'm not running time warp tonic anymore. Um, Basically, same reason as um, I stated before with uh, the Time Warp Tonic nerfs. I would say the main reason why you took this rune on TF is because of the percentage movement speed you got from it when you were under effect of Corrupting Potion or like any potion, but this was perfect in combination with uh, Corrupting Potion. Um, now it only gives 2%, so I would say it's not really worth taking anymore. Um, so that made me have to look into other options here. I'm still running DMAT because I want a one shot backline. I want to have the wave clear. Um, main reason why I'm run still running DMAT. Um, so then there's a few options, right? Either you, I mean, X deck is troll or the flash thing is troll. I would say magical footwear is troll as well because you want your boots ASAP on TF. I don't want to be waiting till 10 minutes or 12 minutes to get my boots. Um, I most of the time tend to buy full boots instantly out of base, so in my honest opinion, the way I play TF, like this item is completely troll. With TF, you're really dependent on landing your gold card, and the only way you're gonna land your gold card is when you walk into the enemy, right? When you buy your boots first, you're gonna be ahead of, of the movement speed curve in the game. What I mean by that is that most champions won't buy full boots on their first base, right? So SDF, you're gonna be able to, the first minutes, walk up to any champion and gold card them. Just because you have an insane amount of movement speed. Because you have the boots, right? If you take this, you don't have boots, and yeah, you're not walking up to anyone. So you're just like sitting in lane and waiting for your R, basically. Um, so that's why I think this is troll. Um, if you want to take it, you know, feel free to. It's just the way I play TF. I think this is bad. Um, perfect timing. I think this is still fine, um, but we'll get to this later as well um, with the items. We'll cover the items off the Darun page. I think the Zonia changes. I'm not sure on it yet. I would still have to test it a bit more, but I'm not that big of a fan of the item anymore. It's quite expensive right now. I think having the, the stopwatch is nice. Um, I just prefer to have Cosmic Insight. This goes really n well in combination with Ionian Boots. Ionian Boots give... Uh, actually, I'll show you guys really quickly. Um, If it would show up, yeah, here we go. Uh, Ionian boots give you 12% summoner spell haste. So what this means is that you're gonna have a lower cooldown on your summoner spells. So ignite, teleport, flash, those are your summoner spells, right? You're gonna have a lower cooldown on those. And um, cosmic insight basically gives the same thing. It gives you 18 uh, summoner spell haste. Both of these stacking up. It's a significant amount. Um, alrighty, so I uh, just like looked up a file on my PC because I did test this before, like a, a long time ago. Like the exact cooldown you'll get out of your summoner spells when you have both Ionians plus Cosmic Insight and it is significant, I have to say. Especially considering that, like I would say summoner spells are 
really important in League of Legends. Like Flash is Flash wins and loses team fights. It's that simple. Um so if you have both uh Cosmic Insight and Ionians, you'll reduce your flash cooldown from five minutes to three minutes fifty. That's a minute and ten seconds off of your flash cooldown. That's insane, right? Um I th I'm not sure what the cooldown exactly is on Ignite and TP, but if you al already know the flash CD you're getting, then it's obviously gonna be really high on 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 TP and uh, and Ignite as well. But uh, I would say flash is like most important summoner, obviously. So uh, that is the main reason why I'm I'm taking this and not approach Velocity or Time Warp Tonic. Um, so that's the setup I'm currently running. Um, this is like, like I said, kind of the, the base page that I would use. Um, if it's a really hard matchup, I'm running the classic uh, spellbook page. Um, and I'll combine this with running teleport so that I can TP back to lane. Matchups where you want to take this in. Uh, Victor, Anivia, uh, Akshan. Um, there's other there's a lot of other matchups but those are like the three that come to mind basically matchups are where you'll get like poked down in lane early and you'll have to take a bad base and then having the tp as backup is just nice because you can tp back to lane um and then the same reasoning basically applies here uh i already covered these two so i'm running perfect timing because i would say this is the best option you get here on tf that is uh, minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight. This is also really nice because now you'll be running Ionian Boots and Cosmic Insight and you will be running TP plus Flash. You're gonna have lower CD which are both really long uh, cooldown summoners. Um, so that's really nice as well I would say in a combination. Uh, then Sorcery Secondary, uh, Mana Flow because we are running, or I am running Night Harvester and then having mana flow for the extra mana is nice. And then I'm running Absolute Focus as well for the wave clear, for the AP. Um, not running Scorch. Uh, I think I ran Scorch once and then I was not, not one-shotting backline any anymore. So then I swapped that out for Absolute Focus and then I was one-shotting backline. So um, yeah, that's the setup. Um, running at the moment still running a uh, 10 percent attack speed just because this makes it in my opinion a little bit easier to last it minions you can go this but then i would say not having the attack speed it feels really clunky auto attacking minions so that's the main reason why i'm running this uh, and you're one-shotting backline anyway normally if you're not that too far behind in your items um, so you don't need this i would say and then Magic Resistor Armor, depends on the matchup. There's some people that run this as well. Um, this is like personal preference, I would say, or matchup dependent. Um, so that's it for the runes. Um, is the Electric Q page completely gone? No, it's not completely gone. I would say, like I showed you previously, the win rate is still fine. It's lower than Comet, but I would say it's not bad by any means. I think if you want to run electric with page still then go ahead. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say the page you want to run if you want to go electric with is probably this one. You still probably want to go demat to kill the backline. Um, yeah, in my opinion this page just feels bad because if you go this you're locked into going a mana mythic. Because um, if you go night harvester with this page I'm not sure but I'm pretty certain you're gonna have mana issues here and there um, at least like I, I probably would um, but I'm not sure maybe if you are a bit more conservative with your queues and stuff but I don't want to be conservative I just want to play high tempo shove wave roam um, I don't want to be sitting on low mana and being like oh I can't join this team fight I need to base now because uh, I'm too stubborn to run mana flow or, or buy a mana mythic, um, so yeah. Feel free to still run this page um, if you want, but I would recommend to swap to these ones. Um, or just like give them a try at least and um, see it for yourself, right? 
then for uh, items, so a um, few things changed here, like I already covered previously with uh, the mythic. Um, so I'm not running Corrupting Potion anymore, um, because I'm also not going Time or Tonic anymore. Like I said previously, I think Corrupting Potion works very well in combo with Time Warp, but since Time Warp Tonic got nerfed, I'm not using that rune anymore, therefore I'm like, I don't need to go uh, Corrupting Potion either. And I think Doran's Ring is a decent starting item, um, you have some health, you have ability power as well, it's your, your Q scales off of percentage AP, so AP and the starting item is obviously nice, you're getting some health back, you're getting some mana back, um, and then two potions, basically just standard uh, starting items. Uh, then the low gold base, so this is uh, items I would buy if I were to like base on a, an amount that's lower than 950. If I have 950 gold on my first base, I'm buying Ionians immediately as a full item. Um, like I stated previously, if you have this as your first base, you're gonna be ahead in the movement speed curve, you're gonna be able to roam a lot better, you're gonna be able to walk up to any champion and gold card them. Um, you're getting the ability ace, you're getting the movement speed, you're getting the summoner spell haste. In my opinion, this is probably the best starting item on TF at the moment. Um, but if you don't have 950 gold, I would say just getting the the brown boots, um, so tier 1 boots, whatever. Um, plus the dark seal. Refillable potion, if you have used your pots, if you haven't used your health potions and you still have two, then there's no reason to sell these and, and get refillable, right? Um, so this is just here if you use both your potions. I'm just assuming that if you base this early that you probably ran out of potions and you got poked out. So then getting this is nice. And then control ward if you have some spare gold. Um, so yeah. Uh, then heading over to the core items, so like I said, Night Harvester is the mythic I'm currently running. Is this the best mythic on TF right now? Win rate wise, I would have to say yes. Um, but win rate obviously doesn't mean everything. Um, I think Everfrost is probably still fine if you want to run it. Um, Rocket Belt is perfect mythic, I would say. Um, just win rate wise, this item seems to be the best and honestly, the games that I've played it feels really good, it feels really nice on TF, um, yeah, main reason why I'm running it. Uh, then second item, I'm buying Lich Bane, so I'm not buying a Rapid Fire Cannon second like I used to do with the uh, Everfrost build, I'm just going Lich Bane, just for damage as well. Um, having a lot of wave clear, you get the movement speed, you get the ability haste, because um, that's what this build is also kind of about is having really low cooldown on your gold card. Um, you're getting 25 ability haste from this item, you're getting 15 ability haste from this item and you're getting 20 ability haste from your Ionian boots. That's a lot. So you're gonna have really low cooldown on your uh, on your gold card. And this mythic, the, the passive this gives is also it gives you... I th it says grants ability haste. I think it's 5 ability haste for every uh, legendary item you buy after this mythic, so you're just stacking ability haste basically with this build. Uh, then third item, I'm currently buying rapid fire cannon just because of the movement speed and the extended card range, but like I said you don't need this every single game, it's just the main reason why I'm buying this third every single game is because it's fairly cheap. It's 2.5k gold. Previously I would consider buying Zonia, but because they changed the item where it, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure how much more expensive, I think it's 300 gold more expensive. Yeah, you do get more AP, um, but they did lower the armor as well. Stopwatch is 100 gold more expensive. Um, so actually, let me let me look it up exactly yeah so i can show you guys 
So the item used to cost 2.6k and now it's 3k. So that's actually 400 gold more expensive. Um, but yeah, like I said, you are getting more AP, but it's 15 more AP. I mean, this item, in my opinion, right now is just way too expensive for what it gives. Um, maybe you could also say it was too cheap before, and this is a fair price right now. I guess, maybe. But I would say if this is like the current pot we are going with, with Sonia, that it's this expensive, then I would say... Um, like going rapid fire cannon second is just a lot better just because of how cheap it is you get movement speed you get extended card range the only problem with this is that you're not gonna have the stopwatch so um, you're gonna have to be a bit more careful with your positioning um, so yeah uh, then as a fourth item you could still go Zonia but um, even on that I'm not certain anymore like 3k is a lot of gold um, so I would ha I have to test this a bit more. I played 14 games now. Not all games go to late game as well. So I'm not getting this item every single game. I have to play more to see if it's worth it or not. Um, but I would say right now that I think it's fine as a fourth item. Um, and then, yeah, your last item, obviously Rabadon. Just because of the amount of AP you get and the passive. Um, is just a really good item in late game to finalize your build. Uh, then I have like a list or like two items here. Items that need to be tested. We can put Zonia here as well. Um, so I think because of what I stated earlier with the ability haste build, Cosmic Drive is the item I'm pretty sure that gives you the most ability haste in the game. It gives you 30 ability haste, which is an insane amount. The spell dance passive also I think works pretty well with TF, not the best. You need three separate attacks or spells, which is basically your combo. Um, Maybe it works very well with Night Harvester. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it. That's why it's here. So I think maybe this item might need some testing. It might be good on TF. It's hard to say. Uh, it also gives you movement speed, which is nice on TF. Ability haste, health, ability power. Could be a perfect item, but they did nerf this, I'm pretty sure, um, a while back. Can't recall exactly, but uh, yeah, this would need some testing. And then Rocket Belt is like the other side mythic that could also work with this build since you're going mana flow and not having mana issues so i haven't tested it out myself but before like way back when the items initially released like x tech rocket belt was my go-to mythic back then because everfrost when the items were initially released the mythic items was utter garbage like everfrost was complete shit. Uh, basically all the the mana mythics i think were, were really shit. Um, they were way too expensive as well. They lowered the gold after that, which is why I started buying Everfrost after that. Um, but yeah, back then I used to buy Rocket Belt every game. So, and from looking back at that period, I would say Rocket Belt is fine on TF. It's not bad. Um, I would say right now that Night Harvester is a bit better. The win rates show as well um, that Night Harvester has a higher win rate. Um, 55% win rate on Night Harvester and 52 on Rocket Belt, so it's not a bad item, it's just I prefer Night Harvester, I would say, right now. Uh, and then Zonia, like I said, um, very expensive item right now, but maybe it's a fair price, it's hard to say, needs to get a little bit uh, more testing. Then this, is this still worth buying? So these were items that before you would buy on TF sometimes. So there was this uh, time where I played Rocket Belt with Tier and I was compensating my lack of mana with buying Tier every game. I would say right now it's not worth buying this item anymore. Just go mana flow in your runes and then normally your mana issues should be fixed. Um, so Tier worth buying on TF? I would say not. Uh, corrupting Potion, I would say this is not worth going anymore either because of the Time Warp Tonic nerfs. Um, Everfrost, I think this is this mythic is still fine. I just prefer the setup I'm currently running. Um, but who knows, right? Maybe in a week or two I swap back to Everfrost and I'm like, oh man, this item feels so nice. I don't have to go mana flow in my runes. I can go this and this and this. You know, who knows what's going to change, but 
now that uh, the root is also only one second from 1.5 um, I'm not sure if it's worth going this item anymore um, crown like I said earlier um, people know how to play around this item right now they know they have to proc this before they all in you it feels like whenever this pass whenever you have don't have the passive up or the like the safeguard whatever it's it's a, it's a useless item it's literally a useless item so I'm not that big of a fan of it anymore stopwatch um, this is 100 gold more expensive now so I'm not sure if it's worth buying anymore I think it's fair that they up the price um, but 750 gold is a lot um, but yeah you have to consider this item can win you a team fight right if you use it properly so maybe it is at the proper price right now uh, then void stuff they changed this item a bit as well they changed the magic penetration it gives they changed the ability power a bit as well I'm not too sure if this is worth taking anymore um, I feel like even if people are stacking MR you probably still wanna like mainly stick to your core build unless there's like unless you have a full AP comp or like you have an AP jungler and an AP and you're playing APTF mid and maybe you have an AP top or an AP support and enemy team is like going Spirit Visage, Murex, Mauve, Momartius, Wits End then I would say Voice of is definitely worth it if that's not the case then just stick to your core, core build uh, Zonia, like I said earlier with the testing this item is I would say maybe maybe it's a fair price but it's expensive right now um, so yeah that's with the items and that's with the, the current build I am using so um, yeah if you have any questions about the runes or the the items or the build or whatever feel free to leave them down in the comments um, don't take everything I said here as um, fact we are two weeks in I played a few games these are my findings everything can change in uh, in a month in, in a few weeks in a few days even like it's hard to say um, these are just the items that I'm having the most success with right now and also consider that I mean I'm not sure where my rating is right now I'm playing in like D2 D1 games so it's not like I'm smurfing in, 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 in bronze right because if I were to play in bronze I could probably get away with building any mythic but these are like decently high MMR games um, it's not like I'm smurfing in gold or something so uh, if that's something you want to know so yeah that's it with the items so finally uh, I have the upper like the upper page of my guide uh, I've updated it so these are like the the runes and the, the item build this is all correct normally um, the only things that have to be changed is uh, like this right so the runes with the explanation and stuff but that's gonna take a decent amount of time which I don't really have at the moment um, but this will get updated soon I just want to let you guys know that uh, yeah it will get updated but this is the upper uh, part of the guide is mostly up to date um, so yeah just just wanted to let you guys know and then finally um, also updated my coaching website I'm not sure if everyone on my youtube channel knows but i do offer league of legends coaching um, so updated my website as well so if you're interested in getting coaching from me everything is listed on my site um, my packages there's testimonials from clients that i've had um, if you want to order a coaching session feel free to and uh, i'll be happy to help you guys out so with that i want to end the video um, hope you guys enjoyed hope you learned something if you have questions concerns anything leave it down in the comments um, also feel free to join my discord link to my discord will also be in the description if you want to interact with my community or with me then uh, feel free to join the discord as well um, so yeah uh, with that I'll leave you guys and uh, I'll see you next time bye